Okay, guys, I'm just out here doing this shit anyway, so I figured I'd just kind of take you through what I'm doing uh, at the time. Uh, we've got the micro educator today. We're going to condition it to my main man, Maui, here. Um, yeah, where do I start, man? I guess I'm just going to go through piece by piece. This is the box it comes in. This is the micro educator option, which means that the receiver looks like this when you open it. Okay, the receiver is right here. You have the mini educator and you have the micro educator. The micro educator has the smallest available receiver. And what I love about it is it puts off, uh, I think, an equal amount, uh, just the same amount of, uh, of, of power as the micro does. The micro is just a little bit thicker like this. I just like the size of the micros. Um, it's just a personal preference. It comes with this super long deal here. And I know for a fact, uh, based on what dog it's going on, that I'm not going to need all this excess here. So what I'm going to do straight off the bat, and I might have to size it a little bit better, but knowing the dog I have, I know for sure that I could probably take off at least like, you know, at least like this much right here. So I'm going to just go ahead and use my trusty dusty knife I got out of a garage, uh, a locker sale there. It was doing that as a hobby. wasn't as lucrative as I thought it might have been. A story for another time but anyway now we have this here uh, moving on we have the remote which looks like this and this particular system is probably one of the more user-friendly uh, systems available um, uh, tack on you know for the money is probably not a better system that you could buy so this is by e-collar technology um, you could check them out on Instagram at eCollar Technologies or you go to eCollar.com and I believe that's their website. But uh, first things first, man, go over how I turn this sucker on. You're going to see this little red dot right here, right? And uh, you know what? Before I continue on, first I'm going to say don't do this stuff without consulting with a professional, okay? Um, I'm not telling you guys to go get an e-collar and slap it on your dog and get going, okay? We're not going to really go over exactly what to do. Uh, for you because every dog is different and how they respond is different and, and things like this however i will say that the conditioning process is relatively similar but the levels matter where your dog feels it and things like this it's all different so i'm not recommending to do this for you guys hire a professional that way you could get the exact assessment that you need but in any case the system itself um, it's all it turns on the uh, receiver turns on via magnetic power uh, the controller the handle the detonator the uh remote if you will has a little red dot right there and all that is is a magnet and then you wave it over the top of this red dot boom and you're going to see a green flashing light to let you know that we are on and popping so you see the green flashing light there's an on and off switch on the back here you press and hold until it says on and now you're on okay we're going to go over the c and the m that you see there here in a second but we're gonna turn it up a couple notches and we are going to just make sure that, okay, cool, that the receiver and everything is working properly. The next thing I do is I test it on myself to make sure that we're feeling it. So, you know, just so I can make sure to feel it, I'm gonna bump it up to a level seven. This goes to 100. Um, we could talk about levels, you know, at, at some other stage, but we're just gonna see if I can feel it to make sure that the system is in fact, yes, I feel that. I feel a little tiny tap, perfect. Level seven, I barely feel it and uh, that's beautiful. So the M and the C, the M stands for momentary, the C stands for continuous. Um, I pr preferably like to keep it on the C, which means continuous. So I'm gonna go to the back of it, it says MC there. I'm just gonna press and hold. It's gonna go to the M first, okay. I don't, I don't want to keep it on only the M because that, it only gives me access to momentary. So I press it. Oh, wait, 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 wait. So I press it. I, pre I was pressing the vibrate button. So this is the only button that I press on the system. This is the fuck you button, which basically means if you press it, it's going to go up like five points, 10 points actually. All right, so it goes from, actually, no, from 7 to 15. So however many that is, it just goes from 7 to 15, boop, like that. But I like to just manually use this so I know exactly what I'm pressing. 
and shit like that. And I keep it very simple for my, for my, for my, uh, for my clients. There's only one button I press. I don't fuck with the vibrate ever. I don't use it ever personally. Okay. It's too much of an inconsistent response from the dogs. Some dogs, they respond to it. Other dogs, it's too aversive. So this has been a much more consistent stimulation, which is just the stim. Okay. So I'm going to press this again until it goes over to the C. Boom. Now it's on the C, right? Yeah. Beautiful. It's on the C. So now when I press the only button that I press on the system, I could press and hold it and the pressure will remain until I get the result that I'm after. Continuous pressure. Okay. So, or I could just tap. No. So it gives me both options, right? So that's, a, that's preferential right there. Um, it comes with a charger, a two pronged charger. One goes to the remote, the other goes to the receiver. One plug charges them both at the same time. The sucker will last like three or four days without charging it at all. It's pretty good in that way. Your mini or micro educator also comes with a clicker, like one of my favorite, all time favorite clickers I've ever used, and I've used dozens of different types. Uh, it comes with a little bit of a lanyard, all right? So if you want to put it around your neck, you want to put the remote around your neck or whatever, that's pretty cool. It comes with a longer touch point for dogs that have a little bit longer hair. For dogs with extremely long hair, you could even order uh, touch points that are even longer. Okay, and you can change those out by simply utilizing the tool that it comes with, which is this little black thing right here. Super easy. These little touch points come off, switch them out. It's just a little screw, screws right on. It's beautiful. Super easy, super user friendly. Absolutely love this system. And no, I'm not sponsored by them. This is just the system that I prefer to use. It's solid equipment. You want to stay away from that bullshit that you get on Amazon for like 30 bucks. They only have like six levels. It's not a very versatile tool. This will pinpoint, this has pinpoint accuracy to, so you could find your dog's specific levels from zero to 100, okay? So it's very specific in that way and that's one of the reasons among obviously many why I love this. So now, uh, something basic and simple I could show you is putting it on the dog. Gotcha, boy. Now talking about putting it on the dog is very important. Because a lot of people don't understand how important it is to make sure that it is sufficiently um, applied. Now, I'm going to take it off to show you this. If the touch points are on the neck, but they're barely resting on the neck, you're not going to get an accurate reading. So you need it to go on and push it in just a little bit, okay, to where the dog, so where it's not moving all over the place, but it's not restricting any of the dog's breathing, right? Location, as high up as it can possibly go. Come here, Papa. Good. As high up as it could. Oh boy, he's a sweet. No eye boogies for you, bro. As high up as it can go. I like to put the box on the side of the neck, preferably. I pull until I kind of can't pull anymore, and then and then it, so you go until it stops, and then you go one more hole, and then boom. This is going to be perfectly fitted for him, and then from here. Um, if we're going to see what level he first starts to feel it at, we definitely start off really low. We start off super low, and if I'm looking for the level, which is considered the working level of which he first starts to feel it, I'm just going to tap, and I'm going to give him a piece of food. All right, I didn't see an ear flutter, an eye flutter, an ear twitch, a head turn, just something that indicates that he feels it. We're on a level four right now, so I'm going to... Good. I'm going to assume he's feeling that, but I'm going to go up one more level because I'm going to look for an, a visual that he's feeling it. Okay, you didn't see, but he kind of moved his eye. As soon as I tapped it, he like moved his eye like, what was that? So I like to start off by doing this with food too. Tap, pay him. Because I want to attach a really positive association to this. Tap, pay him. Okay, we're teaching it to be the gas pedal. Tap, way before we teach it to be the brakes. Okay positive association to it to start off with and then somewhere down the line we can start using it as a correction but not a second before tap good he realizes that there's something good in it for him on the other side of this sensation okay so we're going to keep it at a level five tap 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 moved his ear right there i know it's really hard to see because the camera angles a, a little bit banged up but that's what I'm going to keep it at. And if I wanted to lock it in at a level five so I don't move it on accident, I don't, typically don't do this, but you can lock in a number by pressing down on this button here. It's going to flash. And now it's on a level five and you cannot move it. 
I guess it's on level six, but you cannot move it up or down now. Okay. So that's that. I don't think there's much more I really want to go over with you guys. Um, aside from the fact that, you know, I hope this, uh, video was, uh, partially educational, but again, I don't recommend that you do this without consulting a professional because your dog might be very specific. And, uh, it's really important that we, that we, that we, uh, really honor and respect the dog we have in front of us and understand what, what levels work best and, uh, and, and, and make sure that we're doing this ethically, fairly and appropriately. It's not how a lot of people do this. That's how I like to do it. Cause I love dogs. I respect dogs and everything leans into a relationship focus, right? So if I come on here and I just start ramping it up and using it as correction straight away, it's going to be a relationship damager and it's going to confuse the dog because he just hasn't learned what it means yet. So now I'm going to cut the camera. I appreciate you guys tapping in. I'm just going to go here and start tying this sensation into all the obedience that we already know. It's what we consider and what we like to call layering in the tool to shit the dog already knows. Okay. And uh, ultimately we're going to end up having much more reliability in our obedience. It provides a lot more clarity and it's one of my all time favorite dog training tools to use so that our relationship is better. And so life is much better together. Okay. Has nothing to do with inflicting pain and fear. There's a lot of that bullshit narrative floating around. I think it's for soy people. I think it's for people who don't care to really understand how this tool is utilized. They want to call it shot callers and misrepresent the tool and all this stuff so to just to fall in line with the echo chamber and what the narrative is on it because it feels good for them to be against something that they feel like they're championing for dogs. It's like, dude, you're not really championing for dogs. You're kind of limiting your ability to communicate. And for me, that goes exactly against championing for dogs because you want to provide a clarity. You want to provide a communicative system so that you guys can live more harmoniously so that, you could do so that your dog can have more freedom and live a much better life. So if that makes sense to you, don't be afraid to leave a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe to the channel for much more just like this. And if you want even further in-depth, detailed content, check out Team Flop Ears. Uh, excuse me. Uh, patreon.com slash team flop ears. I'll link it in the description below. It's how you could support this channel and all the free content that I already put out for you guys. Okay. This is TV TV. I'm captain Chad. This is my goal to help you guys become more informed and better dog owners, uh, because that's what we're all here for, right? To be better dog owners, to live more harmoniously. And, 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 and that's that love you guys. See you in the next video. Peace.